Let's turn our Bibles to Book of Matthew. Book of Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 41. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 41. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 41. The title of the message is Uncomfortable Reality of Hell. Uncomfortable Reality of Hell. Matthew 25. Verse 41. The Bible says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed day, Lord, that we have another day here to serve you. Lord, we pray that you please fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit, that he may preach on to us, Lord, a sermon that will change us from inside out, from our hearts, Lord, that we may be holy unto you, a servant that will serve you righteously, Lord. Help us to abstain from the lust of the flesh and to keep our ears and our hearts and our mind clear of the matters of this world and focus solely on the sermon, Lord. And it will help change us from inside out. And Lord, we thank you for your only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the compassion that he showed unto us, Lord, that the day he took up the cross and shed all of his precious blood and died and resurrected so that we may have the free gift of eternal salvation. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving us from hell through the free gift. And Lord, we pray that you please be with any of the brethren that's not here today. Please fill them with the Holy Spirit and comfort them, Lord. And we pray that you put your hedge around us, Lord, today and protect us from the spiritual and physical attacks and from the devils, Lord God, and help us to edify one another, have charity, grace, and kindness, just as you had shown on to us, Lord God. And we pray you bless this day and bless the fellowship. Bless the teaching, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Uncomfortable reality of hell. Hell is a real place, first of all. And hell is a very unsavory subject. And contrary to what some people might say or believe, you know, I don't have pleasure in you know preaching about hell or talk about hell, you know, telling people that you're gonna burn in hell if you don't receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's uncomfortable subject because it's a place where some person who will burn there for eternity with devil and his angels. And People don't realize that Jesus Christ preached about hell eight times in three and a half years of his ministry. So about, you know, at least two times per year. We were street preaching on Friday in Irvine. And Irvine is not the best city when it comes to, you know, spiritual condition. It's known as the, one of the most wickedest cities. I don't know if it's still it is, but it was the city people who watch most, you know, porn. It's all facade out there. It's clean, nice, everything. But when you see people driving by, when you see people walking by, there's certain spirit there. You don't really see it when there's a poor neighborhood, when people are actually seeking some kind of you know, solution in their life because places like that, people already think that they have everything. They have the solution. And it was really uncomfortably sad to see how the new generation of young people have turned out to be. I was talking to one young guy, probably in high school, and he was rejecting the track, and I tried to give it to him. And he said, 
and he said, you know, why do you guys you know, only preach negative stuff? You know? People are going to hell. And I said, you know, you don't listen to the whole thing, right? You know, you're going to burn in hell if you re reject Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And <clears throat> I asked him, do you even believe in the Bible? He said, no, I don't believe in the Bible. But you should preach love. You should say Jesus loves you. And it's ironic. The guy doesn't even believe in the Bible, yeah. but he still wants someone to tell him that Jesus loves him. Yeah. And I mean, conversation wasn't too long. I said, you know, think about it. Hell's real. If you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior according to the Bible, you're going to burn in hell. Yeah. Just think about that. Yes. And that just tells you Hell is real, but to many people, they don't want to accept it as real. No. Their heart tells them there is a place to go after you die. Right. And because of how the world has gotten so wicked, and because so many Bible-believing so-called Christians don't do their job preaching the gospel, people have become like immune, as if like hell is some fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Hell is something that was preached back in the golden age, yeah. you know, when there were revivals everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And you could see the condition of the society when you see the children many times, like high school and down, because college kids are already messed up. Yeah. They go to college, they, you know, go to take this science philosophy classes, and many times they get messed up. And majority of the professors are all liberals anyways. Yeah. And if you are conservative, you're like a one in a diamond dozen, right? And then you get ostracized, you know? You get singled out by faculty and other students. Yes. <clears throat> but when you look at high school kids, junior high kids, even elementary kids, like after I got saved, you know, when I was growing up and then witnessing to people, at least people have respect. Yeah. People were at least, how should I say, they weren't rude. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even if you tell them about hell, you know, they weren't like coming back at you, you know, as if like, you know, you hit a nerve on them, you trigger them, and then they react in a way like an animal. The society's it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. Right. And another case on Friday, you know, we had like a couple kids, and they were riding a bicycle together. And this kid received our track, the long trip, and back from the dead. And over there, mind you, light is very long. I mean, literally like a couple minutes plus. So people have... You know, if you're preaching, you have a you know, good amount of ample amount of time to preach. This kid reads the whole tract. And his friend, at least had a common sense, put those tracts in his, in his pocket. But the kid who, was, who read it just threw it on the ground you know, on the street. Yeah. Usually, you know, if, if it's somewhere like on the sidewalk or somewhere, you know, I just leave it alone because people will pick it up and read it. But you know, if it's on the street, you know, it's a different matter. So I picked that up. <clears throat> and that just showed me another reality, right? The, like kids and society, when they hear, read about, and preach about hell, they hate it. You saw, I saw the contempt in his face. I mean, maybe since I was holding this sign with 2 Thessalonians 1 8, first on it, with the hell fire on it, maybe he couldn't say anything, you know, but you could see it in his face how much he hated yeah. of the gospel and the hell message. You and I have to realize that. This day and age, they'll never hear about hell 
unless you tell them about hell, literally. You're like the only person who could tell lost souls out there, no, even save people out there about hell. Yeah. It is sad when we're preaching out on the street witnessing so-called Christians I mean, they need to check their salvation, but some of them are saved. Yes. Comes at you and say, you shouldn't preach like that. They never do anything in their life. Yeah. All they do is, you know, try to look at some videos, trying to, you know, gain their status within the church, give more food to pour out there. They never want a soul to the Lord. They never talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't do anything. But they will come in, you know, worse than unsaved people, yes. very belligerent, you know, rude, and they actually cuss at you. I mean, they're the ones. I mean, they use the F word, so-called Christians out there. And they hate the fact that we're preaching about hell to people. I mean, when Jesus Christ during his ministry, preached about hell. I mean, I'm pretty sure people didn't want to hear it. But he had to preach because it's a real place. And so many people, murder people are going there. Yes. So first thing is that you and I have to know it's real. Amen. And it has to be real to you. Yes. It can't be something that you heard when you got saved few years ago or tens of years ago, you didn't want to go there, and that's it. And you just have forgotten about it. There's reason why Lord averaged it out like at least a couple times a year preaching about it. Because you and I tend to, little by little, get comfortable with our lifestyle, and we forget about it. Yes. But, you know, Lord gives me that reality check, especially, you know, dealing with people. Hey. Look at it. I mean, so-called this young generation of people don't even care. They hate it. Right. And Irvine, you know, it's an interesting place. We preach on one corner, and since we have a lot of people coming, so we have different brothers went to another corner. So there's a corner here, and then block away, there's another corner with the light. It's good because people who get stuck here, they listen to preaching, they hate it, give us the finger, goes here, they get stuck, and they get <laughs> preached that again, and vice versa. And people, these older four elderly Asian people, they're, they're walking, so trying to give them track. And their first reaction is, you know, I, I don't need it. I go to church. I, mean, I didn't ask you if you go to church or not, right? Yeah. It's about whether you go to heaven or hell right. by believing the gospel, by receiving Jesus Christ. Right. Elderly people, and you can see right away the pompous attitude. Yes. I speak English. You know, I am Asian, but I speak English. So I'm educated. You know? Isn't it funny? You deal with so many people who think they're okay because they're educated. Right. <laughs> I mean, trust in your education, that's damnation. Right. Amen. Yes. Right? And I don't really talk about, you know, my schooling or anything. But, you know, there's reason why, you know, someone like Dr. Jin Kim has a couple things, you know. Because there are people who always think that you only go to Bible college, you don't know anything. But, you know... I myself, you know, went to both, right? Went to secular, you know, get the advanced postgraduate degree and stuff. And when you tell them that, then they kind of listen. What's the point, right? right. I mean, you don't want to listen to people who doesn't have, you know, educational background. That just shows you the attitude of the people. Right. Yes. And to them, it's like I question, is hell even real to you? Right? Yes. What is hell to you? Are you like Jehovah's Witness? Is it just eternal separation? Mm-hmm. Or is it just like the Bible, where there's gnashing of teeth? Worm dieth not. Right. Yes. 
never quenching fire, yes. burn forever. If he wasn't real, why would Jesus Christ preach about it, right? right. Yeah. If he wasn't real, why would so many new translations erase and omit those verses? Mm, that's right. Like Mark 9, 46 and 48. Right. Very yeah. good examples. I mean, Jesus Christ preached a lot out of Isaiah 66, you know, about hell. And when people are getting rid of it, then there's an issue. Yes. Then, as Christians, are you going to just sit there? Are you going to just sit there and do nothing about it? And I was reflecting, okay, how often... I know it's uncomfortable, it's unsavory subject, but if I do care about lost souls out there, how often do I talk about hell? Right? Not because I love to tell people that you're going to burn in hell. No, because I have compassion for them. Because Christ has compassion on those lost souls out there. Amen. Is that, I mean, how often? Or how long has it been? If you look at your daily Christian walk, I mean, when was the last time you actually talked about hell? And think about it. I mean, we witness, I mean, we pass out tracts. But you know when you get the biggest reaction from people is when you talk about hell. I mean, you could talk about Jesus' love. You go to heaven, receive Jesus Christ. They heard it many, many times. But when you say, don't burn in hell, don't go to hell, you're going to burn in hell if you reject Jesus Christ, they get triggered. And something inside them, you know, cries out loud. But you have to do it. Yes. That's probably like the only chance these people ever have. If hell's not real to you anymore, then you're not going to do anything about it. No. It's like, why do people, their relationships go down the toilet? Because they don't see each other real anymore. It's almost like that inanimate object right there, like that grand piano. Uh, you know, if I walk over there, if I talk to it, you'll think that I'm crazy, right? Yeah. Hey, you did a good job today. <laughs> uh, missed some notes, but hey, you know, we'll tune it next time. But people talk like that to some of their, I mean, people that in their family, acquaintances, friends. It's as if they're inanimate beings. And when you have that kind of attitude, how do you ever going to convey, I mean, preach and sh I mean, share the message of hell? You and I have to really check our heart. You know, the Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They need to know. And the Bible says, preach the word in season, out of season. Right. It's our duty to be out there with compassion at heart. Yes. And when people hear it, they know. They hate your guts for preaching to them about Jesus Christ, heaven, and hell. But when they see the compassion in your heart, they hate you, but they're going to respect you. They have to. But well, I mean, of course, you know, some people will care less. You cannot be ignorant of things that's going on out in the world. You cannot be ignorant of the lost souls who's part of your family, who you deal with, who you see, who you meet here and there. You can't be an ignorant Christian, literally. If hell's not real to you, you're an ignorant Christian. I mean, the, one of the biggest doctrine in the Word of God. And you don't really talk about it. You don't pray 
about people not going there, if you don't preach about it, then you're a person that who doesn't care. I mean, that's someone who's ignorant, right? Yes. You know, if, I'm, if I don't care about this type of subject, I'm just ignorant about those subjects, right? Sometimes you and I need to be called ignorant people yes. so that we'll wake up. If every single Christian, I mean, Dr. Ruckman said it, I mean, if every single Christian just led one soul to the Lord after they got them saved, the whole world would have been saved already, right? But how many people actually lead people to the Lord after they've gotten saved? Very few, very few, you know. Witnessing is not only for preachers, pastors, missionaries, you know. Those people, it's for every single person. Every, every single person. If you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's your duty to go out there and witness to others. Yes. Then follow-up question is always, when was the last time? Have you ever, I mean, did you witness to someone? Like, when was the last time? Truly. And when was the last time you did it without church being involved. I mean, we do it. I mean, when we go out there and when we're doing street ministry, you know, it's easy to do it because you have 50 people doing it together and there's always power in number. But when you're by yourself, when you're all alone, when was the last time you took out your time and really witnessed to somebody out there? You probably don't even pray about it, do you? No. You have to pray for the opportunity. You have to pray before you go out. Yes. Uh, some people I could see after listening to this message just run out the door, hey, and knock on someone's door, hey, you know, you gotta get saved, you know. I mean, I like the zeal and everything, but prayer's gotta come before. That's right. Because that might just be fleshly doing. That's right. you know, too many times. You know, Christians, they're moved by their fleshly desires, right. you know, because that's when you want to get noticed. That's when you want some applaud, right. you know. That's when you feel like you did something good, you know. That's how the world wants you to think. That's how flesh wants you to feel, okay. Because many, many times when you truly care about some people and witness to those folks, unless you're like called on to for like testimony, for admonishment, encouragement to others, you're not gonna go out of the way and start announcing to everybody, right? And that's the pitfall a lot of Christians get into. Hey, let me talk to you. You know, it's been a while, but I gotta let you know that, you know, I led someone to the Lord. I'm still doing something. I mean, there's a difference between, you know, when you're called upon, you know, like missionary report, you know, testimony time. But, you know, like a lot of times, because I've been in that shoes before, it's more like your fleshly, your flesh just comes out, trying to be noticed. So even, you know, the Friday, everybody preaching, we had two souls got saved. Yeah. I mean, we were preaching in the corner, and then we were going down, and, you know, brothers say, you know, he has a real, real heart for especially Hispanic people, especially workers, laborers out there. And he just walks there. He goes, man, brother, I have to go talk to them, take my sign. And then, you know, there were like three workers there, and then two of them got saved. I mean, Lord still does his work. Yeah, but I don't see him go out there and, you know, announce to everybody, hey, and I witnessed the two people. I mean, they got saved. Okay, so I get to eat a bigger, you know, meal tonight. I get to sit next to pastor tonight, you know. You know I mean, no, no, none of that. But why does he do it? Because he has love for the lost souls, because he knows hell is a real place. And again, Hell is for people, if you don't know anything, hell is for people who reject Jesus Christ. That's, right. That's it. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't care if whoever you're talking to doesn't get anything. You just tell them. It's for people who reject Jesus Christ. So if you reject Jesus Christ, you're going to go there. Whether you like it or not. I mean, that's very uncomfortable. I mean, just talking about it, you probably will be uncomfortable as well. Because I'm uncomfortable, you know, talking about it, right? But you have to tell them. You have to. It's like this. If you and I knew that today was the last day of our life before we go to heaven, I think we're going to go talk to as many people as we can. Yes. Every, every single person that we know first, especially our family members, and go to every single neighbor, right? Even if you have, you have to drive long ways, because at midnight tonight, it's over. You got to go up to heaven, and you have no more chance to tell people about the realities of hell. Why, why is it that Christians don't have much desperation? We have desperation for a lot of things, right? right. You're desperate to eat a good meal when you're hungry. You're desperate to have fun on your vacation time. You're desperate to make more money. You're desperate to go up in the you know, corporate ladder or any of your job. You're desperate to get good grades at school. You're desperate to look good. You're desperate to do a lot of things. But you're not desperate about hell. You're desperate about heaven, probably, you know, because things aren't going well in your life like you wanted to. You know, so you're like, ah, oh, man, I really want to go to heaven. You know, get rid of all these issues of life. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, heaven is truly a place. You don't have to worry about anything, right? Yes. I mean, it's the greatest decision you and I have ever made by trusting Christ as our Lord and Savior. Yes. And heaven's waiting for us. Amen. But however, it, when it comes to hell, oh, it's not the same. It's like, oh. when you truly think about the word of God and description of hell and people burning there, right? Even the rich man burning there. Yes. Just asking for you know, tip of finger just to help him with his burning, burning thirst. I mean, if you and I were to think about that, I think we're going to do something about it. Okay, that person is going to be an everlasting fire, unquenchable thirst, just burn and burn, right? Turn into a worm, just burn and burn and burn. Maybe some people in deeper hell, right? And deeper pain, they're going to burn and burn and burn. And as much as I did not appreciate and like the attitude of those kids, I still don't want them to burn in hell, right? Man, Bible says again, hell's made for devil and his angels. So the kid was asking, you know, you guys preach about hell and it's made for us to go? I'm like, you don't know the Bible. I, mean, I don't know what junk you got, you know, you receive from. That's not what Bible says. Bible says hell's made for devil and his angels. So you don't want to go there. Because you're not better than devil and his angels. You're not powerful than devil and his angels. You're not smarter than devil and his angels. You're going to be suffering so much in hell. Yes. Can you imagine if you have loved ones? They're going to go to a place where it's made for devil and his angels. Do you think the amount of pain human beings going to suffer in hell it's going to be comparable or imaginable. Because supernatural being like devil and his angels, they're going to be going through that eternal pain forever and ever. And as a human being, you're going to be there forever and ever. And if that is your reality, then you're like, wow. You know, there's reason why the Lord talks about hell many, many times in the Word of God. Because 
He's just God. He's fair God. He has to send them to hell if they reject him. And that's the message people don't preach about. Jesus loves you. Very good. He loved you so much that he died for you already. He showed all his love already at the Calvary. Yes. Now, you who are already condemned, already sentenced to burning hell, have chance to get saved from hell. That's the message you and I have to tell them. They don't have choice. I was talking to this young man. He, he acted like he has choice to go to heaven and hell. No, you have choice to go to heaven, but you're already condemned to hell. Right. Yes. And a lot of times, it's like first time they hear all these things. For many people, you know, if you're witnessing to people, especially witnessing, in, witnessing to them the right way, according to what the Bible says, they don't, they, their face is kind of like, you know, those deer in headlight. Like, oh, it's the first time they're hearing it, a lot of times. But you could see that they're thinking about it. You have to make them think. Yes. Why do you listen to preaching? Why do you read the Bible? Why do you have conversation? It makes you think. And when you think about it, it makes you do something. Or tells yourself to make a decision. You have to make a decision. Well, are you going to talk about hell? Even though it's an uncomfortable and savory subject. But it's something that people need to hear. And many times I have to repeat myself. You know, when I'm preaching about this subject. Because some people will always come out and say, You Bible believers, you recognize, right? KJV 1611, you love to talk about hell and people burning in hell. Furthest away from the truth. We never want anyone to burn in hell. We don't want anyone to reject Jesus Christ. But the reality is, if you reject Jesus Christ, you're going to burn there. Then you have to make sure that it's real to the other person. Isn't that our job? If Witnessing was all about, hey, trust Jesus Christ. And they go, okay, I want to trust Jesus Christ, get saved. No, it's not that easy. Sometimes it is. You know, sometimes the Lord gives you that grace. You know, someone's already ready. They've heard about gospel for many, many years. And they've been waiting for someone to witness to them. You know, you have those cases. But many times, it's a long road. You have to plant the seed for a long time. And then you have to make sure that you continuously do it. Yes. If hell's for people who reject Jesus Christ, then you don't have to go to hell if you receive Jesus Christ. It's the other way around. I mean, isn't that the full message yes. that everyone should hear? So you and I can't stop there either. That's where sometimes we get this bad name. You preached about hell. But where's the solution? I mean, you reject Jesus Christ, you're going to burn in hell. I mean, don't be like, oh, yeah, they should be smart enough. Then you have to do like inverse logical reasoning or something that, you know, then you receive Jesus Christ. No, you have to tell them like it is. If you reject Jesus Christ, you burn in hell. But if you receive Jesus Christ, you don't have to burn in hell. I mean, that's, that's a great news. Yes. To me, if... I'm on my way to eternal jail by rejecting Jesus Christ. But someone says, if you receive him now, you don't have to go there anymore. You're free, man. But not only free, man, you're going to be in heaven. You're going to have your own mansions. You got to do your best to tell the two sides of the story. You and I shouldn't be unbalanced beings. Only talk about one thing more than the other. Yes. Yeah. That's where people might think that you have pleasure just in talking about hell. Have a balance. There's always heaven there too. Yes. Because you have to remember that as Christians, 
we cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That gospel needs to be preached yes. always. Yes. I would rather offend you by preaching the gospel than offend you with my bad testimony of not talking about it. Yes. Right? It's in this world, in the view of this unsaved world or liberal Christian out there, you can't win. Just to let you know, you can't win. You can't be loved by everybody. No. You can't be approved by everybody. You're not going to be one of them. So then, you know, get that out of the way. I know that you're going to be offended one, one way or the other, but I want you to be offended to the point where you think about your eternity. Yes. How many of you in your life, people are offended because you preach gospel to them. And how many of you people are offended because of your testimony? Wrong testimony. Yes. Right? <laughs> Don't even think about having some weight. Don't even think about being credible. Don't even think about getting that real opportunity if you have bad testimony. Right? When you talk about hell, when you talk about heaven, when you talk about salvation, when they see your Christian life, how hypocritical you are. Like, you, you telling me, I'm going to burn in hell, right? Yeah. I'm going to be behind you in the line, though. You're going to be in front of me because of your wicked lifestyle, because of all the things that you do as a so-called Christian. That's why it is very uncomfortable reality, this place called hell is. But in order for you to make sure that people feel so uncomfortable to the point that it comes out in their dreams all the time, thinking about it while they're driving so that they could find solutions about it, yes. you have to keep good testimony, good Christian testimony. Amen. And when you do think about it, you're going to keep good testimony. I'll tell you that. Sure. I mean, Lord, save you and me. Lord, save me from that eternal lake of fire, right? With his precious blood. Thank you, Lord. Because of my sins. Yes. Why would I want to commit these wicked sins that Lord died for already? Then you're going to sin a little bit less. Yes. Can you imagine if we're back in the Old Testament days? We, our sins need to be sacrificed. I mean, we need to get sacrificed for our sins. Man, I think you and I, if you're even a, even a little bit, I guess, having common sense, you're going to sin a little bit less. Yeah. Because you have less to sacrifice, right? I mean, imagine if you sin every single day. And imagine you need to get sacrificed for those. For certain days, I mean, I do want to stay clean. No sin in my life as much as possible if that's a requirement to go to heaven. But that's not, though. But thank God, you know, in this you know, church age, if you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to go to heaven no matter what. But there is a judgment seat of Christ waiting for us, yes. for those who are saved. Yes. So you've got to be judged for whatever you've done, whether it be good or bad. Yes. Knowing the terror of the Lord, it's going to be a scary judgment. Yes. Then knowing that, you can, how should I say, you can be comfortable talking about this uncomfortable reality of hell if your testimony is clean. I'll tell you that. When your testimony is not clean, it's really hard to witness. When yes. your testimony is not clean, there's no power. Right. Right? You could be the greatest orator. You could be the greatest persuasive speaker. You could be the greatest person that could prove a point. But there's no power in you. Because you're full of sin in your life. There's that influence of sin that's causing you from not being a person who is able to preach about hell right. all the time. Sometimes you get, you get that conviction. You know? It's like this. If you're drinking right now, 
it's going to be hard for you to tell another person to stop drinking. If you're smoking, it's going to be hard for you to tell another person to smoke. Right? Same thing. As Christians, if you're living in sin, it becomes hard to witness to people. That's why you have to. Every day should be a reminder. Every moment should be a reminder that I have to take care of my sin problem. Amen. If I truly want to lead someone to the Lord out of this eternal lake of fire, I need to get right with the Lord. Yes. I need to resolve my sin problems. Then you actually are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and you're going to have power. And people are going to actually listen. It's going to hit their heart. Because at that point, I can guarantee you, you don't want them to burn in hell. I can guarantee you, you have that compassion like Lord, Lord Jesus Christ Amen. had to those you know, lost souls out there. Then there is a chance. Can you imagine at the judgment when they point at you? You need to burn in hell. The way you lived your life, I live cleaner than you. I mean, obviously, you're not going to burn in hell, right? Yes. But all those fingers will be pointing at you if you don't have good testimony. Right. I mean, think about it. All you did in front of people were talk about worldly stuff, right? And never talked about anything spiritual about Jesus Christ. And they're definitely going to point at you. At the Great White Throne Judgment, I mean, everybody's going to give their case. Lord, I need to go to heaven. I mean, oh, man, that person there? Why is he with you? He should be right here with me. She should be right here with me. I mean, I actually follow their lead doing wicked things. I, mean, I watch what they watch. I heard what they heard. I talked what they talked about. Why are they there? Well, because, you know, they're bought with a price. They trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's why. What? They never told me. They never told me. Lord, you have to punish them. You know what? I deserve to burn in hell because... You know, at that judgment, everybody, every tongue will confess Jesus is Lord. They have no excuse. Every excuse will be run out at that time. But, man, can you imagine someone looking at you right in your eyes? You probably want to avoid it, but you can't. Like, they're looking at you with this burning, fiery eyes full of tears coming down. Because they know the reality that sooner or later, they're going to be burning forever and ever. But they're looking at you. Man, you did not tell me anything. And you are going to be in heaven forever? Man. I've, I mean, we, sometimes we want to hide somewhere, right? Especially when you do something wrong. Maybe you broke a glass, right? The most precious glass your heirloom, you somehow broke it, and your family comes home. What happened? Right? You're like hiding somewhere, right? Or you leave the house or something, right? But at the judgment, you can't hide. No more hiding. I mean, if you've been that person who been hiding from this truth about uncomfortable reality of hell, you can't hide. You can. You can't run away from it. You could, but what's that gotten you when you're running away from this reality? In any reality, if you try to run away from reality, you, know, you become cuckoo or you just get into more trouble. As Christians, you got to stop running away now. You just got to face it. You hear it almost every week, right? Because I need to hear it every week. Got to resolve. 
got to get ourselves right with the Lord. Yes. Solve that sin problem. Confess that sin. Get right. And with that clean slate, literally, it's time for you and me not just be hearers only, be a doer. Amen. You and I can do a lot more, I tell you that. Yes. I mean, I know you and I don't spend 24-7 doing things of the Lord. No. We can always do more. And it is a great reminder to me, and I believe for everybody, about this hell, reality of hell. And once you really think about it, why Lord died for us, man, not a soul in our life should pass by without hearing from us about hell. Amen. With compassion, because the Lord died for them. Okay, it's not made for them. It's made for devil and his angels. Amen. The pain, the suffering for our eternity that they're going to go through, even our puny brain cannot comprehend. And once they're there, that's why there's gnashing of teeth. Probably they're going to think about you. And they're going to think about all the opportunities that they could have had if you had told them the gospel of Jesus Christ. I definitely don't want that to be my legacy as a Christian. We're not perfect, right? But you and I don't have to have every single person that we knew in our life that we ever dealt with to be the number one person in their head who could have helped me go to heaven but never told me anything never told me about hell, always talked about love and love and love. And I didn't realize anything because I didn't think I had any issues because love takes me to heaven. And then I'm here. Wow. That is not how I or neither you should try to leave your legacy as a Christian. So the question is out there for you and me. Christ and the Bible talks about people going to hell because it's real. It's unsavory and it's uncomfortable. But it's your job, it's my job to preach so that people can't get out of hell, so that they won't have to burn in hell. What will you do with hell from now on? Let's pray. Dear Father, we are just so unthankful the way we live our life. Especially, Lord, you shed your precious blood and died for us so that we won't have to burn in hell. We think about heaven. We think about good stuff. We think about rapture. But how often do we really think about hell not because we want people to burn there, but because we don't want people to burn there because you die for me and you die for everyone so that they won't have to burn there. And because it's real, Lord. Help us to have more desperation when we discuss and witness to others about this uncomfortable reality of hell, Lord. I pray that if anything that's hindering us from having that clean slate, serving you and being a witness for others and good testimony for others, help us to get right, Lord. Because we desperately need to get right and do something for you, Lord, in these last days. As the world's literally going straight down to hell, help us not to be that person who's helping it, but help us to be the person who's standing up for you, standing up for the truth and the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and preach through our life and conversation and our thoughts. And above all, Lord, we want you to come back, Lord. And in this wicked world, it's only going to get worse. But we want to see you right now, Lord. Any, any issues that people may have, Lord, pray that we'll just, every single person will come to you be honest about things and get it right, Lord. Bless everything else, Lord God. 
and even so come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.